My name is Reinhard Gensler. I'm an astrophysicist, an experimental astrophysicist. I work at the Max Planck Institute, Max Planck Institute for Extraterrestrial Physics. And I'm interested in my, my team and I are interested in studying massive black holes um, and, and the formation evolution of the universe. One effect that Einstein's general relativity theory predicts is the Schwarzschild precession. Can you explain what that is? Well, if you, if you envision the solar system uh, and, and what Newton and, and Kepler knew about it, then you have the planets orbiting the, the sun on, on elliptical or, or circular orbits. And these ellipses, if there's nothing else in the way, is a figure which is always the same. Okay, it stays the same in the orbit and the, the planet orbits around the sun for all times. Not so in general relativity. And uh, there are several effects here. One is just due to the fact that the space-time makes the orbit uh, of, the, of the planet uh, precess, move forward, ro rotate, if you like, a little bit uh, forward uh, over time. And if the sun has a angular momentum, so it rotates, uh, then there's a second effect, which is also a precession. We must, as scientists, that's, our, that's the scientific method, keep on testing in different parts of parameter space whether a theory is correct in order to either, you know, find it is correct or it is not correct. So that's, that's what we're doing here. We are looking in part of a parameter space in mass, which has not been looked at. There's a second motivation we have, and that is to actually show that the object which is in the center of, a mil of the Milky Way is a massive black hole. It plausibly is so far, but it might not. It might be a double object. It might be a triple object. Who knows? And so by making the measurements we are measuring or have been making, we are basically firming up the evidence ever more that this is indeed a supermassive black hole. Now the third, if you like, is the biology of black holes in their environment because uh, black holes are not lonely uh, objects because of their gravity. They are attracting other objects. One would expect, in fact, to be the, a massive black hole in the center of a galaxy to be uh, tightly surrounded by a cluster of stars and may, maybe stellar black holes or maybe so-called intermediate mass black holes. So these would be objects of, say, a few hundred to a few thousand uh, solar masses. They have not been seen, but they might exist. You already observed another effect of relativity theory in 2018 with the latest instrument, gravity. Why does it need more tests? The effect we're seeing now is basically uh, true for, for, for objects with a mass. Now, general relativity, uh, in contrast to Newton, also says that uh, gravity affects the motion of uh, massless uh, things like light. Uh, so if, 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 if you have a flashlight or a laser and you're close to a black hole and you shine that to us at a large distance, then the uh, laser light uh, has to climb out of the massive uh, gravity around the black hole and its energy lessens. And so we see it red shifted. So that's one of the effects. Uh, the next one we were, would like to see is the effect of the spin. So if, there, if a black hole uh, uh, is rotating, then it takes the, the space time around with it and a star which would be moving there or gas which would be moving there would see that and start to wobble. And if you can see that, you can measure the, the spin of the black hole. Perfect. It's super, super interesting. Thank you very much for the time you've given me. Um, and good luck to you and uh, a lot of success for the next project. Okay. Thank you.